Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shankar and I am a maths teacher. I know some of you might think that the title of this video is kind of weird. You might find a lot of videos out there with the title how to get A from fail. This kind of title may be very interesting but the reality is it's not that easy. I'm not saying you cannot go to A from fail but what I'm trying to tell you is the transition that happens from fail go to A will happen face by face. You can't flip your results from fail to A in one day or maybe in a snap of a finger. These kind of things only happen in Marvel Studios and you are not Thanos and this is not. So now get back to reality. The results or the transition from fail to A might take weeks or months or even years. Depends on your effort. If you are a student who was from a very bad results and slowly you have progressed to C or B and now you are stuck at that result and you cannot go to A, this video is for you. Some of you watching this video might think what's the big deal going from B to A but let me tell you something. The truth is going from B to A is even harder going from fail to C. And why is that? Okay, I got a logic behind this. Let me explain to you this. So the first thing you guys need to understand is every exam paper that you sit for, the questions are set from different levels. For an example, let's say we talk about SPM mathematic paper. The exam paper will be set in a ratio of 5, 3, 2. That means out of 10 questions, 5 questions will be in easy level questions, 3 questions will be in the moderate level questions and 2 questions will be the hard type of questions. If you don't know about this, be happy because 5, 50% of the questions in the exam gonna be easy type of questions. So from this you guys can see if you are a student who's failing your mathematics for you to reach C or B level or get at least 50 marks in your exam is quite easy. So let's say you are a student who's getting B now. For you to go to A you need to tackle the top 20% of the question which is in the hard category for you to reach your A. And that is why obviously I'm telling you getting C from fail is way more easier than getting A from B. You only need to know this one thing for you to progress from B to A because if you already getting B that means you already do all the things that you need to do for you to reach B but let's say you are still struggling with fail or D you might probably want to check out the video I did how to score in maths and the link is up here so what is the exact one thing that you need to do I would say you should look at maths beyond numbers. You should use maths as a problem solving tool and not as a subject. Alright, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I can make it very clear by showing you this one example question. Let's look at the question now. Wait, I got an idea. Maybe you want to try this question for yourself and see whether if you can get the correct answer or not. Maybe you want to pause this video first, try to solve this question and then continue watching this video. Questions coming up. So have you got the answer? Now let's go through this question together. So now the question says a frog is trapped in a well which has a slippery wall. The distance between the water surface of the well and the ground is 40 cm. The frog wants to get out of the well. It can jump as high as 5 cm on each jump. Since the wall of the well is slippery, the frog will slide down 2 cm on each jump. After how many jumps will it be able to get out of the well successfully? Now, the question is very simple. The concept is very, very, very clear. What they try to tell you, first, let's imagine the situation and draw a picture to understand what they're trying to tell us. Now, let's say we sketch the well and this is the well and this is the ground. Now, if we zoom into this well, then we can see there is water and the distance between the water and the ground is 40 cm. Now, the question says there's a frog in the water and the frog tried to come out to the ground. Now, here is the trick. The question says the wall of the well is slippery and every time when the frog jump up, it jump for 5 cm and come back down 
two cm. So automatically, many students start to say that okay, it jumps five cm and come back two cm. That means logically, every jump it's only going up three cm, and that is not wrong, guys. That is perfect. That is correct. What you're saying is correct. But the problem is when you stuck with only the numbers, that's where you get wrong. So what I'm trying to tell is, out of ten students, nine students they do this. They take the total height from the water to the ground and they divide by every jump which is 3 cm so what they do is they take 40 cm they divide by 3 and they will get 13.3333 as their answer now this is what a lot of students will do they will start to think all right the frog needs 13.3 jumps to get out from the well but logically speaking the frog cannot jump 0.3 times how can somebody jump 0.3 times, right? So what they do is they assume that the frog needs 14 jumps to come out from the well. And they write the answer, the frog needs 14 jumps. Yay, finished. That's the answer a lot of students will give. But unfortunately guys, this is a wrong answer. The actual answer is 13 jumps. Let me explain to you why. This is the problem. We use mathematics to solve a problem. We don't take only numbers into consideration where we need to understand the problem and the logic of the question first. Now, let's rewind back the question a bit. In this question, they mentioned that the frog can jump as I has 5 cm. So that means the frog is taking a jump and it's going high as 5 cm. Because of the slippery wall, it's coming back down 2 cm. Therefore, every jump it takes can only reach 3 cm height. Now, let's pause and think this for a second. Let's say the frog is jumping 3 times. The frog will only reach 9 cm height from the water because 3 times 3 is equal to 9 cm. That's logic. That is perfectly correct. Now, let's assume the frog is jumping 12 times. On the 12th jump, the frog probably will reach 36 cm from the water level. Now, this is a critical point to think. When the frog jump for the 13th time, you guys need to understand that the frog is not jumping 3 cm but it's jumping 5 cm. On the 12th jump, the frog is already reached 36 cm from the water. Now, the 13th jump, which is the most important jump for the frog. When the frog jump for the 13th time, what happens is the frog jump 5 cm. So logically speaking, the frog is already out from the well. The frog is already 1 cm above the ground. Now, if the frog already reached the ground, do you think it will slip and go back to cm because of the slippery wall of the well? No, because it's already out from the well. And that is why your answer is 13 jumps and not 14 jumps. Did you get the answer right? If you get the right answer or the wrong answer, let me know in the comment section so that we know how many of you got the right answer and the wrong answer. If yes, congratulations. But most important thing, the reason for your answer should be right as well. This is what I mean by seeing mathematics beyond just numbers. Maths is a tool to solve problem. Every problem they give you in your exams is for you to apply mathematics and solve the problem. This is exactly what they want to test you in the higher 20% of the questions. They give you a problem and they're gonna see whether you can apply mathematics skill to solve the problem or not so guys i hope you get my message right if this is your first time to my channel i hope you can hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that every time when i upload a video you will get notification and most importantly if you are a subscriber of this channel you might stand a chance to win all the mathematics content from me for free so don't forget hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you find these tips is helpful for you please let me know in the comment section below and if you have any questions you want to ask me please state them in the comment section below so that i can reply you personally all right that's it for this video guys i will see you in the next video until then take care bye bye